Today I will be calling cable. My name is Wilkar Meyer and I'm your Elliott Wave Analyst, reviewing what has been and predicting what is likely to be in cable price action. So, since the last episode, the movement continued long, just as I predicted it would, and uh, we'll do a quick little recap. So, we've been tracking what I believe is an E-wave of a multi-year triangle. <clears throat> so, this would be the A portion of e this is an expanded flat B portion, and it's in the process of making C that will finish E. Now, when uh, E is over, this whole entire wave that began early in March should most likely <clears throat> remain contained within these uh, parallel lines we could see a slight break, but for the most part, it's it's probably going to stay contained within these parallels. One thing I wanted to make a note of, you can see that uh, for the monthly Fibonacci resistance and support lines, that it has already broken the first level. Now, for six months, I kept track of this, and uh, if it breaks the first level, there's an 89% chance that it'll break the second level. So the second level is at 154.20. That means that although it's gotten incredibly close at 154.12, <clears throat> I expect that it will get to 154.20 at a min minimum. Okay, so, and there's probably a good possibility, which I think is 61%, that it would get to this third level right here. So that is the 1080 minute chart, which is 18 hours. <clears throat> now we're going to zoom in a little bit and uh, take a look at the fifth, well actually this is the C wave. So these support and resistance lines are different. These are based on the weekly. The one I showed you previously is based on the price movement from May. These lines right here that you're seeing are based on the price movement for last week. Okay, and so they will be good for the same period, which is a week. So these will be good Sunday through Friday of this week. And getting back to the channeling technique, you can see that uh, <clears throat> we connected the terminus of 1 and 3, moved it down to the terminus of 2. Okay, That usually provides a good target for the end of 4. You can see that 4 came down and broke uh, that trend line. So what that means in Elliott Wave terms is that you're highly likely to see now, well, what we do is we actually <laughs> connect the terminus of 2 and 4. We move this all the way up to the top. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to draw a parallel. Extend right. New parallel. <clears throat> I'm going to move it to the top of wave 3. Put this one back where it was. And uh, what should happen now is we should see uh, five, or we, excuse me, we should see five break this upper channel. Well, as you can see right now, price is falling and it didn't even get close to touching that upper channel, let alone breaking it. So in terms of the Elliott wave count, I'm not going to even attempt to call this over. What I'm going to do is call it one, okay? And often when you have sort of a weak first of a fifth wave like this, you'll see price come down break this lower channel you know it'll probably find support right here around uh, R3 and then you'll see it start pushing up again right it's gonna push up and it's gonna be this third or even the fifth wave of five that ends up breaking the channel so this is a really powerful way to try and determine whether a wave is over or not because as you can see you can count one two three four five with two being a flat and four being a I believe is a double zigzag but double zigzag triple zigzag zigzag it doesn't matter it all counts on as a zigzag for technical purposes of alternation and <clears throat> it would be easy to say one two three four five but the channeling technique helps us to understand what's actually happening and I think what it's showing us is that we now have one 
of what's going to become an extended fifth, okay? So the other thing too is that this trend line, this 2-4 terminus connector, often you're going to see, even if the fourth wave hadn't broken, which it did, if the internal second of the fifth breaks this channel, that would also signal that price action would break the upper channel line. So we'll see what happens here. I very much believe that uh, it's going to come down a little bit. You know, how far? I don't know. We'll see. I think probably about R3 there. As far as Fibonacci retracements, that's approximately, eh, that's almost a 61. So maybe it'll fall 61.8%. Now, as far as trading goes, uh, I think this is a great trade opportunity. It's going to come down. You know, you might want to get in somewhere around 1.5335, with your stop being the terminus of four, which would be 1.5272, and your take profit. That's a little harder, but <clears throat> obviously you want to be able to count five waves, and you want to see it break this upper trend line. So, risk reward. I think that's going to end up being easily two to one, uh, so that's a trade you're going to want to make, uh, and you'll just have to follow it in real time in order to take profit. That's today's call. I hope you'll join me again for tomorrow's call.